video walkthrough on Keystone Cougar. Start in the back, you're pre-wired for a backup camera. Now this does not have a backup camera, you're just pre-wired for one. Um, it does use power from those marker lights up there, so the running lights on your tow vehicle need to be on for the camera to be functional. But right over here, let me grab my keys so we can take a peek up in there. Just use the key the right way around, it should work. There you go. Cable inlet, both satellite and cable. And then you can lift this up, pull it back, so when you close it, you can run them into there, have it look nice and neat. Access to the back, this will just kind of get my keys sorted again real quick. There you go. Back a little storage area. This, will, this is also a bunk, so you can just unfin this, fold this down, fold this down, and I got a nice bunk. This is the compartment that I will put your guys' short cord in for power, so you guys know exactly where it is. Speaking of show cords, here it is right here, 50 amp show cord. It's your show cord. Like I said, it'll be in there. Um, just twist this on, and you can tighten this up some more. Nice solid. Bumper caps come off. Um, that's going to be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. These do not come with a sewer hose. That'll have to be a separate purchase. Your side out's closed for now, but we'll go more into that when we're done. When, when we go in inside. Black tank and gray tank. One on your left is a gray tank. One on your right is a black tank. Definitely recommend dumping your black tank first, letting that get all the way dumped. Then hit pulling your gray tank, flushing out your gray tank. Um, that gray tank water will flush the black tank water out of your sewer hose. That way when you pick it up to carry it to put it in your bumper, it's not dripping in black tank water. Water heater, super simple. The only thing you'll have to do, throw your rod, anode rod in here. This anode rod, when you have 25% of this material remaining, get you a new one of these. Put it in here, thread it as much as you can by hand. Inch and a sixteenth is the socket size on that. Get it slugged down and then as soon as you hook up water to it, it'll fill up. If you want to use electric, make sure this switch is on, on out here. If not, turn it off. Then, definitely recommend draining it after every trip. You don't want it sitting full of water for an extended period of time. Shut off all sources of the water. Open up your pressure relief. Once water stops squirting out, snap it closed. Then you can take your plug out. If you neglect to do that, all that pressure coming out of here is now going to come out of there. And you're going to get wet. You might get hit in the stomach with that anode rod as it comes flying out at you. If it was hot water, it's going to be no fun. If you do it, you only do it once. So Try not to do it at all so you don't... Make you put yourself into a mess. Docking station. This is where the water hookups are. This up. That's why I like these mallards. They have this, this style docking station with a hold open right here so you don't have to hold that open. External shower, a quick disconnect. City water connection. This is where you screw your hose into one city water if you're going to fill your tank. Put this the other way. You'll fill your, you'll pressurize your tank. Monitors progress on the monitoring panel. Please, please, please do that. This is your tank vent. Water will start squirting out of there when your tank is full. Um, since it is being filled via pressure, you do definitely want to monitor its progress. Don't walk away because you'll start pressurizing that fresh tank and then you could burst it. So when you have a tank fill, fill it up. Go inside, watch the monitoring panel. As soon as it says full, come out here, turn your hose off. And then they do give you backup key and then these little slots work just like that cable inlet does so you can keep this drawer closed and still have your hoses in there outdoor storage right here let's kind of get in there that's controls for your leveling system. You have tank, tank heating pads in there so you can keep your tanks from freezing up. Pre-wired for solar. That's where the panels will get hooked into. You still have to buy the kit. Battery disconnect so you can disconnect your battery when you're storing this so nothing is using the battery while you're away. However, if you're one of those people who have the ability to, to just plug it in while you're storing it so it can stay charged. Make sure the battery connect is on so the charge receives the battery. Or the battery receives the charge. You do have a switch here which turns on those orange LEDs up front. 
And you do have leveling system right here. So you just hit on, then auto level. Now it's gonna retract the trunk, the tongue jack to get it level, front to back. Then it's gonna run these jacks and then the back jacks. And then the tongue jack will raise up once it's all the way level, which is fine because it is making contact on the ground via these. Well written and clear instructions are on this right here. So I'm gonna hold that here so you guys can read through it through the video. There's a lot to do, so we won't go over all the functions of it now, but we'll go over the main ones. So while that's doing this, we'll go around, keep going. Got a backup crank for tongue jack, I believe, no. Yes, for your tongue jack for that one. And this is gonna be the hose, that sprayer for there. You will just need to get um, like a garden sprayer that screw on the end of that. As you can see right now, it's lifting the front jack up, which is fine. Battery. Group 24, RV Marine Gray battery. In the winter, I recommend taking the battery out, storing it somewhere um, a lot warmer than being outside. So basement, garage, shed, anything just than just being sat outside. And then use your battery disconnect. I was showing you to your advantage. You don't have to take this whole cover off, but it's easier to show. Dual 30-pound cylinders. They are filled, so you don't have to worry about getting them filled up for you. Got an automatic changeover regulator, so it's pointing to this tank. It's going to pull from this tank first. Once this tank were to be empty, a little diaphragm in here will open up. It'll automatically switch to this tank if this tank were to be on. They are both off now. Actually, this one's on. Let's turn it off for now. However, this doesn't move at all, indicating it has switched. It doesn't. There is no real way to, for you to know it has switched without coming out here and physically checking yourself. And then last little thing, some people put this in the middle thinking it's going to pull from both tanks equally. It doesn't work that way. It's one or the other, never both. Power tongue jack with a light. We won't mess with the tongue jack portion of it because it'll interrupt the leveling system. Seven way, hook to the back of your truck for lights and the trailer brakes, chains, cross them. You have a breakaway cable here. There's a breakaway box underneath there. If for any reason your trailer will get unhooked from your truck, it'll pull that pin out of the box, activate the brakes on the trailer, keep everyone safe. So on the other side, there was one of these, but it's easy going to be show you right over here out, out of the sun shining on it. It is part of your camera system. Um, you don't have to, if you buy the backup camera, you don't have to buy the can, this type with the side cameras, but they do make a kit, and it's quite pricey, but I do think it'd be um, a good investment. It comes with a backup camera, and then you get the two side cameras, and then a large screen. That large screen was going in your truck, so then you can have all three images shown at once. Your back backup, and then your two side cameras. So they don't activate when you do turn signals, because these are just, again, running lights. They will always be on when you turn the running lights on. Um, but they'll turn the cameras on, and you'll be able to see your blind spots next to your trailer. Very nice. That right there is your brain for your in-command system. Do not fiddle with it. That's the main controller for your leveling system. These doors, they can be a little finicky. If you pull straight out on them, they're never, ever going to work. You have to pivot your wrist back like that to open these doors. There's even a chart on how to do it right there. Just wanted to demonstrate that for now as we're moving along outdoor power it's gci protected all your gfcis are on the same circuit so if one's going to trip they're all going to trip cable and satellite output so if you want to have a tv outside you can furnace make sure it stays clean same with your fridge make sure it stays clean Outdoor kitchen with a mini fridge. Mini fridge works like any standard mini fridge, only going to work if you're plugged in. Grill, slide this bad boy out. You saw that hose right there. That is going to get hooked to this propane quick disconnect right up underneath there. And then there's a valve you open up. Once you have it plugged in and the valve open up, all you got to do to light it is just push this down. Oop. That was on, so let's, let's leave it off for now. So. Yep, all you gotta do, and you just keep 
until it lights. I like having that ability to have an outdoor cooking area. And then another shower out here. This one has hot and cold out here. All right. Well, one more thing on the outside, and then we'll kind of mosey our way on to the inside. This way here, if you're going to use a fan on your range hood, make sure this is open. If not, close it. That's just the exhaust for the range hood fan. I will come inside right now. See, these are very easy to use. I was able to do that one-handed. And command system right here. Tap that. Turn it on. All right, sorry for the interruption. When you receive this in command, when you receive this in command, when you see this unit, these two lines won't be there. We're gonna get you a new one of these. But we're gonna continue our walkthrough. So right now, your passcode is all zeros. If you would like to change it, go to settings, go to passcode, type in the current passcode, all zeros. Then you'll be able to change your passcode, clear passcode, set a new passcode. If you do change your passcode and you take this in for warranty work, let somebody know so we can get into it. Then you have HVAC. Front AC is optional, does not have one, but you can install one. Rear AC, you go through mode fan, so if you want fan low or high, you can do that. That's just running your fan on the AC to help kind of circulate air. Type it again, cool, auto, high or low. Recommend running on auto for your cool. Um, so that means if you have it set to say 64, once it reaches 64, it'll turn off. Then as it starts getting warmer in here, it'll kick back on again. A lower and a higher are just gonna allow it to run consistently. And if you do that, eventually it'll freeze up because of uh, it, has, it doesn't have a chance to cool down. And that's why I recommend auto. Tap it again, you got heat. Your only source of heat is gas. Tap it again, you have auto. That's cool because let's say you have it set to 65 and during the day it gets to 90. It'll turn the AC on to help bring it down to 65. But let's say that night it gets to 40 degrees. It'll turn the furnace on to get it to 65 in here. So that's what's a nice feature too. And then hit it again, it turns off. And then you go back. You can read your fresh black gray one and gray two here. Gray two is just going to be this sink. There'll be another valve out on the other side up front. We'll show you that as I leave. I think I might have neglected to show you that. My bad. And you can turn your water pump on and off from here. Water heater, gas, electric, gas, and electric. Remember what I said about using electric? You need that switch on the outside on for it to still work. Control your lights. Bedroom light, ceiling light, awning light. Slide outs, awnings. You can control your slide outs here. So we will control your. There you go, slide outs out. Now you can do your awning, same thing. Make sure you have your door halfway open like this for your awning to run. And you can see those awning lights right there. Awning does not stop automatically when it's out. That's something you have to visually look to. Once you see the flat hang down and that bare metal tube, there'll be a sticker, a white sticker that you'll be able to see too, and then it's all the way out. It doesn't look like we'll be able to go all the way out because that scaffolding will be there. Uh, it'll look close to that. <laughs> Let me get the scaffolding it's right there. Now, this does have a smart arm. So all you have to do is hold, so you can see right here, unlock. Let's see if you can see it. Press and hold till that light turns on. Then you can run the awning in and out from out here. You do have to unlock it. But if you can tell where my hand is located and how that might end up being a problem. So when it gets to a certain point, move your hand. See, very nice. They are adjustable. You can grab here to when it's all the way out but you can see how that'll it'll pitch one arm down so it'll lower one corner. You can have both lowered. So if it's raining, you can have water pitch off to one end. 
Um, if it is storming, roll your awning in. You don't want to, see, look, see, that could end up hurting. If it's raining real hard, roll your awning in. You don't want the wind to break it. Um, if you roll it in wet, as soon as you get the chance to roll back out to let it dry. This is prepped for the um, a wind sensor. So it doesn't have one, but it is prepped for one. Um, so if you would like to have that, talk to um, a parts person. Try to get one ordered and installed. And then that'll kind of, um, if it does get windy, it'll roll itself up. You can adjust the sensitivity of the wind sensor once it's on right there. Your lights have an auto function, so it knows. If you have your lights off out here, right, and on inside, it'll kind of flip it, you know? Like how you, uh, like if you have a house that has a light controlled by two different light switches, and then it kind of reverses the direction of each switch depending on how you use it. It'll do that with your awning lights. So if you have them, see how it says they're on here? But they're actually off. If I turn them off here, they will. Oh. Oh, see, there you go. That did it. See, now they don't even work off of here. It's because you have them off on the switch on the outside. Sorry. These can be a little. Turn the light on. There you go. I accidentally turned them off. Right in my face. There you go. I generally, when I work on these, I don't use that smart arm. I don't use the controller on the smart arm. But that's good if you're um try if it's really windy and you need to roll the awning up quickly. You could do it from outside inside rather than having to come inside. Then you can, like I said, water pump turn it off, water heater. I went over that. Sides awnings. I did that. This is pretty much it for this. Right over here. Pre wired for the Furion. If you don't drop it, Corbin. Pre-wired for the Furion Wi-Fi router. You have to buy it. See, they will, um, you can buy it from the Furion or I'll talk to the detailer. Um, they do charge you a monthly fee to use it, but if you do it, if you do get it, all you have to do is take this off, set it aside, and then your router will replace replace this piece, and then you slide your router on like that. Very simple. Bedroom simple. USB outlets and outlets on either side there. Storage up underneath your bed. Let's see if I can't. Yep, storage up underneath there. Spot to mount a TV in here with satellite and cable outlets up there. Emergency exits are super simple to use. Lift up, push out, set it like there. If there is an emergency, you push this all the way out, grab the screen, yank it off, dive out the window. Then you do have a carbon monoxide alarm here. Those uses your standard 9 volt batteries. If those start dying, throw a new 9 volt in there. Sliding door, open this like that. Slide that out. Boom. Make sure you clip this like this when you travel so the door isn't flapping around all over the place. Plenty of storage in the pantry here with a light up in there too, as well. Table turns into a bed. All you do is lift the table up, pop them legs up. Rest the table down on these little shelves right here. Take these cushions, lay them flat on the table once it's down in the slower position and it creates a platform to sleep on. Lights for your side out, tap it right here. Turns them on, tap and hold. It dims them. These nice recliners here have USB ports with lights and then they are massage and heat on them too as well. And then you just pull this little plastic tab here, pull up, it'll recline yourself. Microwave looks like a standard microwave, only works if you're plugged in. Light switch, fan, remember I said if you're gonna run this fan, make sure that flap on the outside is open. Cooktop, super simple to use, fold back and up. All you do is turn it to the flame, twist your sparker, should light right up. All three burners work the same way. Your oven's a little bit different. Turn that to the flame, push and hold. As you're pushing and holding this, you want to twist the sparker. And then what you're looking for down in there is that pilot to get lit. Once the pilot is lit, you can then turn it to your desired temperature. If you know you're going to cook in a few hours and you don't feel like turning that off, turning, relighting the pilot next time, if you turn it off, turn it to the pilot. Shuts your burners off, leaves your pilot on. That way you don't have to relight the pilot for next time. However, 
I definitely recommend turning it all the way off before you go to bed or before you leave your trailer for any extended period of time. Then you have a light switch that turns the lights on the knob on and the lights on the other knob. Fridge is super simple. You have off or on, auto or gas. Very simple. It's default mode. I just recommend leaving it on auto. Auto is going to default to 110, so if you're plugged in, that's what it's going to use. If you were to get unplugged for any reason, it'll automatically switch to running off of propane for you. Um, save your food from getting spoiled and whatnot. Definitely recommend uh, plug, trying to plug this in the night before because these fridges work a little bit different than your normal fridge. Home these do take about 8 to 10 hours to get to operating temperature. So don't come to the campground, plug it in, put your food in there right away because... It's not going to get cold until quite a few hours later. Got a radio. I want to try to find your remote for your radio. People never put them where they belong. There they are. TV remote, radio remote. And then also in here somewhere is... Yes, that book right there is going to have all your manuals in it. Radio is super simple. This will act as a uh, HD DVD player, not a not a high def, not like a Blu-ray DVD player, but an HD DVD player. Tap it on. You have different. This is allowed, these will allow you to change your channels as well as skip tracks. You have zones. So zone one is inside. You can turn the inside speakers off, or you can turn the outside speakers off. You can have them both off. You can have them both on. Whatever way you want. Presets here, push and hold to save a preset. You have pause, play, stop, previous track, next track, or skip channel. Bluetooth, you can Bluetooth your phone to this. Mode button, auxiliary, headphone jack, USB. TV does pull out the swivel. So you can adjust it. Make sure There are straps. We will strap it before you take it, but make sure you also strap it before you take this anyway, too. And then access to swap that over to satellite if you have it hooked to satellite. Another outlet. Access to the back of your TV if you wanted to add like a game console or if you if you don't think HD DVD players are enough and you have a bunch of Blu-rays you want to take with you, then you can hook up a Blu-ray player too. Bunk. Top bunk has a 300 pound capacity. It does have a fan up here too. Crank that open. Not a fan, but a vent rather. I apologize for misspeaking. With a light. This light switch controls the living room lights right here. This light is, oop, dang curtain. USB right here. Outlet over there, light for up there. Bottom one, all of that, the light is back there. Ladder to get up top bunk. If you look, you can see that. You make Better make sure you put your ladder back up before you close your slide out. Coming in through here. Right here is your main resetting GFCI. If any of your GFCIs would have tripped, that's the outlet you're going to come and reset it on. Tub super simple. All you do is turn it on like that. You can turn it both on, lift this up. It's going to divert it to your shower head. And your toilet, as long as you're pushing this pedal down here, it's going to keep flushing. So you can be holding this for five minutes if you wanted to, and it'd be flushing for the whole five minutes. Then the nice thing about this toilet is it's made of porcelain. It's a nice sturdy toilet. I feel like your toilet at home. Some of them are made of plastic and they definitely feel like they're made of plastic. So I like these porcelain ones. Smoke alarm. Standard 9 volt batteries. Start giving a little voltage chirps. Throw a new 9 volt in there. Alright. Oh, a few more things. Propane alarm, that's hardwired to the 12 volt system. The only time it'll give you low voltage chirps is if the 12 volt battery, the main one up front, starts to die. Breaker box, all your breakers for your 120 volt appliances. All your fuses for your 12 volt appliances right there. Definitely recommend investing in some, a spare fuse kit just in case. Alright, well that concludes their video walkthrough of your uh, Keystone Cougar. Hope you guys enjoy using this trailer a lot. I really like this setup on these, so I hope you guys like them too. I um, hope you found the video informative and good.